it sounds like the kind of anime that kind of gets you going in some of the uh, um, slightly more serious, more adult stuff. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like sci-fi stuff. If there's space, it's great. Mm. And uh, and yeah, I, I mean, I do appreciate the comedies, but it's sure. and the comedic moments in the serious shows, like mm -hmm. Ed in Cowboy Bebop, is great. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, I, I, I turn to anime and I look for the sci-fi outlaw star I love. Mm -hmm. great All one. that sort of stuff. Yeah, nice. Um, have there been some like recent anime series that have kind of caught your eye? Uh, well, um, Sword Art Online is mm -hmm. one of them. And um, Summer Wars, I, I love Summer Wars. Mm -hmm. It's a standalone movie, but yeah. Love that film. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I still look to the, the older stuff. It, yeah, I haven't gotten into Attack on Titan or... Um, any of that newer stuff. It's just, yeah, it hasn't grabbed me. I'm so glad you say that because I run into a lot of, of younger fans who get so tied into what's coming out this season and they never watch anything that came out, you know, more than six months ago. And I'm yeah. like, you know, if you want to maintain your interest in this stuff, you got to go back and watch stuff in the genre that you like. Yeah. And it's available. Totally. Yeah. And yeah, I, Back in the day, back around 2000, 2001, I was purchasing stuff through DVD Express, all that cheap anime, and it would come in every week. And I have a shelf that's just full of older stuff. And then I was like, nice. I, I gotta stop. I've got stuff, I still have stuff that's shrink wrapped. I have Robotech <laughs> that's ah. shrink wrapped on Laserdisc. Wow. And uh, so, yeah, my backlog is still pretty significant and also now storage is a problem mm. so i've been looking to more digital so either watch it on netflix like where i watch sort art online mm. or just get a digital copy yeah so i don't just store it because it's a problem <laughs> <laughs> yeah i ended up going to binder method myself after a while yeah. um you know and i i, I miss those old the uh, the covers to some extent, but it's also I'm like, no, there's just no way. It's just, yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So what are some of the things you've, you've bought that you're particularly um, happy with buying? Um, I, I like, or I, I used to like getting the limited edition stuff. Mm. Uh, and uh, like the dot hack sign collector box that was shaped like a hexagon. Oh yeah. Inside. Yeah, I've got that. I also have the retailer box, which oh. I won at um Katsukon like, over ten years ago. It's a <laughs> it's a hexagon, but it's bigger and and so that is very rare. And nice. love having that. But it, yeah, I liked getting the the boxes, whether it had a t shirt or some other little thing in there. And then I realized, well, I have too many T-shirts. I have no place to store these boxes, so I just cut back on that, and um, it's made me cut back on collectors' editions as a whole. And now the only collectors' editions that I'll ever buy are the World of Warcraft ones that come with uh, the book and the big box. They can put on my shelf just for the whole set. Yeah, an anime has kind of got or. Anime in America has kind of gotten away from the, you know, absurd limited yeah. edition box sets that, you know, we use. Here's eight things, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all, but they're also putting it on uh, fewer discs. Because I mean, at one point they were considering putting Princess Nine on nine DVDs. <laughs> that was not necessary. No. They cut it down to six. But now, and it was six individual volumes that would take up so much space. But now, you get it in like a little thin thing, and so it definitely helps with the space. <laughs> this is this is very true. And is that a terrier mon I see behind you? Yes, it is. Wow, nice. Yeah, I've had him. Let's see, he was at New York Anime Expo with me in 2002. So yeah, I've had him for like 13 years. <laughs> uh, he went with a. He went with me to a lot of conventions, especially if I was dressed as Renamon. 
There we go. <laughs> nice. Wow. It, w w what's awesome about it is it you know it's life size. Yeah, and <laughs> that's the only one I've ever seen. I saw it on eBay. Uh, it was on sale from Hong Kong, and I jumped on it. Mm. And it's apparently it's got the tag, and it was mass produced. Okay. But I've never seen another one. No, I've never. Make their own. I've seen smaller ones, but the life size one, that's it. Wow. And uh, at Enemy Boston this past year, Mona Marshall, the voice of Terry Amon, was threatening to steal him. <laughs> I believe it. Well, it, it, Digimon's one of those things where every con I go to, there is at least three Digimon cosplayers. Yeah. Yeah, it's usually the one of the first two seasons, but mm -hmm. Tamers is mine. Represent. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Renamon and Terry Ramon are my favorites. Mm -hmm. Same here. Uh, I remember uh, reading an interview with uh, the, the writer, Kanaka, and he was saying that uh, every series he's on, you, you get one character that everyone loves to write for. And Terrier Mon was the one. <laughs> just you know, he's just so much fun. Yeah, and oh, I've I've wanted to see Kanaka at a convention for so oh, long. No kidding. And we we've tried to get him, but I I would I would travel long distances if I could see him because I I love his stuff. <sighs> and the, the first con I went to was Otakon '01, I think, which is when which is all lane themed. Oh yeah, um, and it, it was the reason I went to the con. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, they're, they're flying over like the staff. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I've 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 bought pretty much everything he's done. <laughs> you know? Kanaka, it's like, yeah, this is this is this is quite an impressive dude. Yeah, Big O, Digimon Tamers, and I forget what else. Um, Lane, Hibernate Renway. Oh. Wait, oh yeah, he was, yeah, good stuff. Mm -hmm. It's weird, but it's good. <laughs> well, Lane's one of those those shows, too, that I think really gets across, and I think Kanaka in general is one of those guys who can really get across how anime is fundamentally different from pretty much anything else out there. Yeah. Um, you know, you're not going to see a kid's show like Digimon Tamers, you know, anywhere else. Yeah. And that was like fifty episodes in that season, so that's that's a lot of a lot of time to fill. Yeah. And you did a good job doing it. it yeah, I, I need to rewatch that at some point. Hopefully, it holds up. Mm. Yeah, I watched it a few years ago, and I was I was very pleased. Um, I was like, oh yeah, this this was as impressive as I remember from watching it on TV. Um, uh, it, it just also you know. The, Whenever you have a kid's show where, the, you know, the hero has a moment where he's, like, literally carrying one of the girls unconscious in his hand as he's, like, coming out of, of this, you know, horrible prison she's been kept in. I'm like, wow, that's... Yeah. Woof. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not just a happy little kitty show. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, is there anything else you wanted to plug while we're, uh, while we're finishing up? Uh, well, I do a podcast, Anime Cons TV, that's uh, been going for almost seven years now. Nice. And every every Monday we have a new episode where we go to a convention and report on it, or we talk about convention related things, whether it's cosplay or artist alley or anything else. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, so yeah, there's that, and also I've got uh, my first podcast, The Chibi Project, and that's uh, it comes out very infrequently, mm. but uh, we destroy toys in various ways for no good reason. Just okay. they're there. It sounds like a as good. I've I, I've heard lots of, of of far weirder reasons to start a podcast. <laughs> well, it started as a website, and then I discovered Twit Indignation. It was like, wait a second. I can do this online as a podcast. <laughs> is it as big as Twit now? Uh, is the Chibi Project as big as Twit? Yeah, I mean, uh, no. Oh, well, I'm darn. It's not even as big as Twit's smallest show. Not even. 
I think total it might have as many downloads as the worst <laughs> episode of anything they've ever published. I don't know. It's yeah, it's not big at all. It's oh. cool. <laughs> Anime uh-huh. Cons TV, on the other hand, that does fairly well. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, no. Whenever I hear people talk about how you know I have the successful podcast, I'm like, let me show you Twit. Yes, you know? <laughs> well, this is the TV project, not a successful podcast. It's fun, and the few people that watch do enjoy it. But there we go. I, yeah, it, and, and it's, it's one of the great things about podcasting too is that you can have fun stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. You can do a podcast that's you know just just fun. Yeah, and that's why I keep doing it. <laughs> Cool. I'm certainly not making any money off of <laughs> the TV project. I hear that. Cool. Well, I want to thank you so much for uh, for doing this. This has been a, a blast. Oh, my pleasure. Cool. And uh, hope uh, uh, all the best to you, and hope you take care. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.